Hey guys, it's Yaron with another coding interview tutorial and this time we have binary tree maximum pass sum. It's labeled as elite code hard and it's not a simple question but I promise it's doable. So let's start with the problem description. A path in a binary tree is a sequence of nodes where each pair of adjacent nodes in the sequence has an edge connecting them. A node can only appear in the sequence at most once. Note that the path does not need to pass through the root. So that's just a lot of words describing what a path in a tree is uh, in a very formal way when really it's pretty intuitive. So let's look at a couple examples. So any walk from some node U to some node V along the edges of the tree is a valid path. You can ignore the direction of the edges, meaning I can go uh, from B to A to C. That will be a valid path. I can also go from uh, D to C to E. Notice that it, it is valid even though it doesn't pass uh, through the root of the tree. Now, what I can't do is I can't go from B straight to D, right? Obviously, because there's no edge connecting them. And what I also can't do is go from A to C to D, back to C and then to E, because C would appear twice in the sequence. So that will be invalid as well. By the way, each node on its own is also a valid path, it's just a path of length one. So let's get back to the problem description. The path sum of a path is the sum of the node's values in the path. Given the root of a binary tree, return the maximum path sum of any path. So if you look at our examples, the sum of this one would be 3 plus 1 plus 7, and the sum of this one would be 10 plus 7 plus minus 2, and the sum of this one would be simply minus 2 because that is the only node in the path, and we're asked to return the maximum of all the valid options. Now let's look at a couple examples. So if I have this example tree, all the possible paths are here. The sum of this one will be simply 1 because it contains only one node and its value is 1. The sum of this one in the same way would be 2, and the sum of this one will be uh, 3. The sum of the next one will be 2 plus 1, which is 3. For this one, we will have 1 plus 3, which is 4. And for the last one, we will have 2 plus 1 plus 3, which is 6. And 6 is the largest out of all the possible options, so 6 should be our output. Now in this example, all the possible paths are here. I already wrote the sum for each of them, but you can pause the video for a second and make sure that you agree that these are all the possible options and that these are their sums. Now the maximum of all the sums is 55, so 55 should be our output for this example. Now let's start to think of the solution and I want to start as naively as possible. So if you want to find the maximum of all valid options, we first have to find all valid options, right? So how do we do that? We can split the problem into smaller sub-problems. Each path has a single root, right? Always the topmost node. This path is rooted at node B, this one at node F, and this one at node G. These four paths are rooted at node C, and all the rest are rooted at node A. So how do we find for each square, each sub-problem, all the valid options in that square? Meaning, for each node x, we want to find all the valid paths rooted at node x. So at the beginning, our squares are empty, and we start with the easy nodes, we start with the leaves. Node b is a leaf node, it has no children, so the only possible path rooted at node b is the one that contains only itself. Same goes for nodes uh, f and node g. Node c is a bit more interesting, there are four ways we can generate a path that is rooted at node c. The first way is to leave it on its own, link it to neither of its children to form a path of length 1. This is how we get this path. The second way is to link it to any path rooted at its left child. The left child is f, so c can link to any path in this square here. In this case, there is only one option and it forms this path. The third option is to link c to any path rooted at its right child. The right child is g, so any path in this square. Uh, again, there is only one option and it forms this path. And the last option is to link C to both the left and right sides. This includes any combination of both sides, so any combination of these two squares. And uh, there is only one such combination and it forms this path. So to recap and generalize these rules, in order to generate all the paths that are rooted in node X, there are four options. The first option is to link x to neither of its children. Second option is to link it to any path rooted at its left child. Third option is to link it to any path rooted at its right child. And the fourth option is to link it to both sides. Now let's look at node A. 
In order to generate the paths that are rooted at node A, we again have the same four options. The first option is to leave A on its own, link it to neither of its children to form a path of length one. The second option is to link A to any path rooted at its left child. The left child is B, uh, so any path in this square. There's only one uh, path, so it forms only one new option. Third option is to link A to any path rooted at its right child. The right child is C, so any path in this square. But, and this is important, we cannot link A to this option here because this will create an invalid path. It creates this path here and C will appear twice in this sequence, so it is invalid. So A cannot link to this path, but it can link to any of the other three. The last option is to link A to both its right and left sides. This includes any combination of these two squares, of course, excluding this option. Uh, and this is how we get these uh, three new options. And this is how we generate all the possible options. We generate the paths of the leaves first, then we use these results for the next level, and we use these results for the next level, and so on. And we can easily just find the maximum for each square, We'll call it the max sum of each node. Then we can take the maximum of all these max sums and that should be our global max sum. That should be our output. In this example, the max sum for node B would be minus eight. There's only one path rooted than node B, so it's a no brainer. And similarly, the max sum for node F would be 15 and the max sum for node G is 20. And then the max sum for node C would be the maximum of these four options. The maximum between 20, 35, 40, and 55 is 55. And the max sum for node A would be the maximum of these um, options here. And that will be uh, 50. Now we take the maximum between these four max sums, which is 55, and that should be our output. But of course, generating all the options for all the nodes will take a very long time. The higher the level, the more options we get and this number will grow exponentially fast. The key to solving this question well is to realize that we don't need to generate all the possible options for all the nodes. We don't need to try to link A to every possible option rooted at node C. It's enough to just try the maximal one. We're trying to maximize the sum of the path, so there's really no point in trying any of the other options because naturally their contribution to the sum will be less than that of the maximum, right? So we only need to try to link A to the maximal option of each child. The second important point to realize is that in order to avoid considering these invalid options, it's not enough to know the maximum of all four options. It's not enough to know the max sum of each node. We also need to know the maximum of these three options because these are the only options that the parent will be able to link to. So each node, in addition to its max sum, will have to compute the maximum of these three options. We're going to call it the linkable max sum, and then it will have to inform its parent of that value. In recursive tree functions, the way a child can inform its parent of some value is make it the return value of the function. I'm going to explain this in more detail while writing the code. So we're going to write the code now. And once we're done with that, we're going to do a walkthrough of the code on an example to make sure everything is completely clear. Now with tree problems, we usually use recursion. So we're going to write a recursive helper function here. The recursive tree function will accept the uh, root of the tree as an argument. And then it will call itself for each one of the children. This will cause us to go down the tree until some stopping criteria is met. With tree problems, the stopping criteria is usually if root is null. So if the root is null, we want to return. If the root is null, it means that we have reached the end of this branch and we are ready to roll back. As the call stack unwinds, we go up the tree all the way back to the root. Now a good place to start is what should be the return value of this function. The return value should be the value that needs to go up the tree, the value that the children need to send back to their parents. In our case, the value that needs to go up the tree is the linkable max sum, right? That is the only value that the parents need to know about their children. So uh, again, because the linkable max sum has to go up the tree from child to parent, that should be the return value. So we're going to add the return value here. And now we want to compute the max sum and the max linkable sum of the current node. So we want to implement the uh, four options. First option is uh, link to neither. Second option is link to left. Third is link to right. And fourth is link to both. Now the sum for the first option is going to be the current node value. Because we're linking the current node to neither of its children, we're getting a path of length one that contains only the node itself, which means that the sum of this path is the node's value. 
Now the sum for the second option will again be the current node's value plus the linkable max sum of the left child. Now we said that the return value of this function is the linkable max sum. So whatever the function returned when we called it uh, for the left child would be the, the linkable max sum of the left child, right? So we only need to add this. And then in the same way, the sum of the third option will be the current node's value plus the linkable max sum of the right child which is what the function returned when we called it on the right child. The last option is to link to both sides, which means that um, we add the current node's value to the linkable max sum of the left child plus the linkable max sum of the right child. Now we know that the max sum is the maximum of all these four options. So we can write it like this. And the linkable max sum will be the maximum of uh, these three options. Now we of course want to return the linkable max sum of the current uh, node. And by the way, if our current node is null, we want to return uh, zero because the uh, linkable max sum of an empty path should be zero. And the last thing that we need to do is keep track of the maximum of all the max sums, meaning the global max sum. We're going to initialize it to the smallest value an integer can have. And then we can keep track of the maximum like this. Now we just need to call this function from the main function with the root of the tree and return the global max sum. Okay, so I think we're done, but before we submit this, I want to do a walkthrough on an example and make sure that this code actually works. So in our main function, we call the helper function with the root. And the root in our example is node A. We first check if node A is null, it is not. So we move on to the next line. We call the function recursively with the root's um, left child. In this case, it is uh, node B. Now we check if node B is not null, it is not. So we move on to the next line, which is to recursively call the function with the left child of node B. The left child of node B is null, so it returns zero. The zero goes here. And then we call the function with the right child of B, which is again null, uh, so it returns zero. And then we move on to the next line of code for node B. Link to neither is the node's value. The value of node B is minus eight, so link to neither is minus eight. Link to left is minus eight plus left, so minus eight plus zero, which is minus eight. Link to right is minus eight plus right, which is minus eight plus zero again, which is minus eight. Link to both is minus eight plus zero plus zero, which is again minus eight. Then uh, max sum is the maximum of these four options. So minus eight. And then linkable max sum is the maximum of these three options. So minus eight again. And now we need to update the global max sum to be the maximum between the current global max sum and the max sum of the current node. So um, minus eight is larger than uh, int mean. So we update global max sum to be minus eight and we return the linkable max sum of B, which is uh, minus eight. And it goes right here for node A. Now we move on to the next line of code for node A, which is to recursively call the function for the right child of node A, that is node C. We check if node C is not null, it is not. So we move on to the next line. We call the function for the left child of node C, that is node F. We check if node F is not null, it is not. So we call the function for its left child. The left child of F is null. So we return zero, which goes here. And then we call the function for the right child of F. It is again null, so it returns zero, which goes here. Now link to neither for node uh, F would be 15 because that is its value. Link to left would be 15 plus zero. Link to right is 15 plus zero. And link to both is 15 plus zero plus zero. The max sum is the maximum of these four options, so 15. And the linkable max sum is the maximum of these three options, which is also 15. Now the global max sum would be the maximum between minus eight and 15, so 15. And we return the linkable max sum of F to C. So it goes here and we move on to the next line of code for node C, which is to call the function for C's right child. 
uh, that is node G. We check if G is not null, it is not. So we move on to the next line of code and we call the function for the left child of G. The left child of G is null, so it returns zero, which goes here. And then we call the function for the right child of G that is also null and it returns zero, which goes here. So link to neither for G would be 20 because that is its value. Link to left would be 20 plus zero. Link to right would be 20 plus zero again. Link to both would be 20 plus zero plus zero. And then the max sum would be the maximum of these four options, so 20. And the linkable max sum is the maximum of these three options. Again, 20. Now uh, we look at the global max sum. The global max sum is the maximum between 15 and 20. So we update it to 20 and we return the linkable max sum of G and that goes right here. Now we move on to the next line of code for node C. Link to neither for C would be 20 because that is the value of node C. Link to left would be 20 plus 15 because it's its value plus left. Uh, so uh, 20 plus 15 is 35. Link to right would be 20 plus 20, which is 40. Link to both would be 20 plus 15 plus 20, which is 55. And max sum is the maximum between these four options, so 55. And linkable max sum is the maximum between these three options, which is 40. Now we look at the global max sum. The global max sum should be the maximum between uh, 20 and 55. So we update it to 55. And we return the linkable max sum of node C back to node A. And now we move on to the next line of code for node A. Link to neither for node A would be 10, that is its value. Link to left would be 10 plus minus eight, which is two. Link to right would be 10 plus 40, which is 50. Link to both would be 10 plus minus eight plus 40, which is 42. That makes max sum 50. That is the maximum between all four options and the linkable max sum uh, 50 as well. And uh, one last time we look at the global max sum. The global max sum should be the maximum between 55 and 50. It is 55, so we leave it as is. And now we are done with A and we are done with the helper function. We are back to the main function, which then returns the global max sum as our output. So uh, it means we return 55 as our output, which is the correct output. Okay, so now that it looks like this code actually works, let's try to submit it. Okay, so that's a success and we are basically done with this one, uh, but we could do a few more uh, small optimizations, like we don't need to add this to all of these lines. Uh, if we add this zero here, it's not going to change anything, right? So what we can do is not add uh, this roots value to every option here, we can just add it to the maximum over here. And then we need to change this to this zero and this uh, to this left and this to, and then this to these guys. And then same goes for the linkable max sum. We have zero and then left and then right. And now we can get rid of these. Now let's see if that works. Okay, so that's a pretty nice optimization here. It doesn't change the time complexity of the algorithm. It just reduces the number of computations per node. Um, but the time complexity of this algorithm remains linear to the size of the input because we only do a constant amount of operations for each node. And then the space complexity is going to be um, proportional to the height of the tree because we have the call stack of the recursive uh, function. Okay, so that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please leave it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.